Hey guys, welcome to Irish Medieval History. This week we have Shane Kent from University College of Cork, who will be covering clothing from the 4th to the 6th century in Ireland and what the Irish would have looked like. I hope you guys all the best and enjoy. Good, good evening or good day to anyone listening to, listening to this and welcome to Irish Medieval History. You may remember me, right? I'm Shane by the way, from previous videos on the channel regarding Irish links and contacts with Rome. I've been asked by the gang on the channel today to make a video on the following. What did the Irish wear for clothing between the 4th to 6th century AD? Now, this does contain a massive disclaimer. This video will have a lot of assumption and guesswork. So, please take anything I say with a pinch of salt and sources will be down at the end of the slide or most likely in the description of the video in question. So, to start, the 4th to 6th century covers the year 300 to 600 AD, that's the 300 year period. And there were two major events that most likely have influenced you know, fashion and clothing styles of the Western world and possibly in Ireland as well. So the two massive main events worth mentioning are at the start of the period, 300 AD, the end was the end of the military anarchy and the start of the reign of the Emperor Diocletian, which also marked the beginning of late antiquity. Skip forward 300 years to, six, to 600, the Western Empire is gone. Europe has fractured into many small Germanic kingdoms and the Eastern Empire under Justinian in the mid 500s is trying to reconquer the West. So this 300 year gap is pretty much not stable at best. So in the map here, we see all of the various migrations just before the collapse of the Western Empire. All these people coming in, bring in different cultural aesthetics, different types of fashion. So have did Ireland, what was Ireland's clothing influenced by this? So now that we have some historical context, we must ask, what did they, the Irish wear? What did it look like? Who influenced the style at the time? So in short, we have nothing. We've next to nothing. Any evidence of clothing within the Irish archaeological record is predominantly from the Viking Age up until the end of the medieval period. We've next to nothing between the fourth to sixth century, so we have to go on other go back on other sources to uh, to make some educated guessing as to what did the Irish wear. So with that in mind, we must now go back in time to the class to the relative earlier empire. But outside of Ireland, we do have examples of what clothing might have might have been worn. So here in this image is a recently discovered woolen tunic from the Breheim National Park in Norway, dated that was dated between 230 and 390 AD, along with a pair of mittens. Now, it's what's known as a T-shaped tunic made out of wool. So, could this have been some sort of example of what an Irish tribesman might have worn? Not beyond the realm of possibility. So, since we have no physical evidence of Irish clothing, we have to travel back to the classical world and see what the Celtic slash Irish people would have worn. So what? Okay, so since we have so little evidence regarding what the Irish wore between the 4th and 6th century, we have to travel back in time. So we are quoting classical sources on what Celtic peoples would have worn. So the first one source I'll be quoting will be Polybius from the 2nd century BC, who makes a note of the Insubres and Bowie tribes were clo clothed in pants and tight light cloaks. Diodorus in the 1st century BC. The Gauls wear stunning clothing, shirts dyed in various clothes, and wear trousers and striped cloaks with a checkered pattern. I think for winter use and one for summer use, so that's two, two cloaks. 
Strabo, they wear sergai, which is a Latin word for cloak. Slit tunics, their lengths stretching as far as past their private parts and buttocks, with sleeves that extend roughly to the wrists. And they wear tight trousers. Julius Caesar in the Bello Gallico also mentions that in Kent they wear animal skins. Now, is that a reference to some sort of leather jerkin or leather cloak? Possibly. You know, Caesar was a propagandist. You know, he always wrote about himself in the best possible light. But relatively speaking, he was accurate when it comes to physical descriptions and geographical descriptions, except when it comes to Germans. But that's a different story. So, oh. can we, using the classical sources quoted, can we make some sort of guess as to what they wore in the 4th to 6th century? Can we identify any types of clothing? Sadly, no, we can't. So, we have to make a guess. So, we can assume what materials were used, wool or linen, anything fancier like cotton or silk, most likely a preserve of the upper classes or the kings of the period. Cloaks, most likely two, two, you know, one for summer, one for winter. That is not beyond the realm of possibility. Trousers, likely. There's nothing to say that they didn't or did. Tunics, likely, if we assume, like anywhere else in Europe, if in Norway they had it, in the classical world they had it. Nothing to say that in Ireland they didn't. Animal skin cloaks, yes. Apart from the one I mentioned earlier on, there is a leather, a leather cloak in the National Museum of Ireland. As to the type of material and the, the quality of the material, the image here, which is much later, dated to between 885 and 1030 AD, was very coarse. It's very coarse wool, probably un, unfullered wool, in my humble opinion. Now, the, another source we have for possible clothing comes from Scotland, and specifically is the Picts. The Picts, or painted ones, are mentioned in Roman sources in 297 AD. So we have a parallel people to talk about, and possibly maybe, maybe fashions that, might, that we might have used. Now, However, very little fabric has been found in Scotland or clothing material, but some has been found. So in Falkirk, a tiny piece of wool cloth with a checkered pattern found in the dated to the third century AD. So any fabric of any, of any description ha is a rarity in the archeological record, but there's one piece of fashion that we'll get to in a minute that is very striking. Now, we have a Pictish carving here from Donny Carr, south of Stonehaven in Aberdeenshire, which was recently dated to the between the third and fourth century. Here highlighted, we have short brachii in the early Celtic dash Roman fashion, stopping just below the knee. And this horseman is also seemingly wearing some type of cloak with a shield draped around it and quite possibly a long sleeve tunic. As a side note, I love the braiding on the horse's mane. Now, as for the checkered pattern, there is a classical reference to it in the Moroccan city of Ulbus in the province of Mauritania. On the remains of a statue of the Emperor Caracalla, there is depicted a captured Caledonian warrior. And what's fascinating is that it shows him wearing checkered trousers and a cloak over his shoulder. So, check a checkered pattern clothes is not beyond the realm of possibility within an Irish context. Then the most famous Scottish item of clothing that has been found is the Orkney hood, dated between 250 to 650 AD. So hooded cloaks or half hooded cloaks were common within Britain and in Pictland. Another item of clothing that was used within the period that we're talking about is what's known as the Burris Britannicus, a native short cloak, short cloak, but not as short as the Orkney cloak. Could this type of hooded garment been worn in Ireland? Quite possible. So, 
Unfortunately, what can we assume about Irish clothing between the 4th and 6th century? Not a lot. <laughs> Not nothing. No item of clothing from that period in Ireland has survived. So we have to look outside of Ireland and within written sources to make some sort of assumption as to what it may have looked like. So we go to average person on the street and I'll explain the image here in a minute. Most likely some sort of long sleeve or short sleeve tunic made out of wool, most likely common. Pants, brack eye. I would imagine wood could be a choice if we go to the Pictish monument, the Pictish uh, sculptures, that almost all of them are shown either wearing, not wearing pants, but most off, but quite commonly short pants that go past the knees. So that could be possible as well. Shoes? I don't know. That, that, not, you know, the, the leather shoes have been found in Irish context from the medieval period, they're highly decorated. Could have been found in towards the end of the Western Empire? Possible. There's just a lot we don't know. And I'd love to get into far more detail than what I've got here in this in this video right now. But it does require a little bit more study. Now, the one thing I haven't discussed in any detail is kind of cross cross fashion cross fashion i.e one people coming into another cultural base and bringing their own stuff or taking their own um items with them the picture here is from the late great i guess mcbride of a goth warrior in western arm um, in the western empire service he's dressed in his germanic apparel so if you didn't know any better actually he'd almost look like a proto viking but here on the right, this image is of a Roman military belt of the of the late empire. So not only do you have a situation where people are coming into a new area and bringing their own cultural fashion with them, but they're also taking other items out. As a side note, the only thing we could definitely say about what Irish people wore is that the churchmen, the early saints and churchmen, but before the end of the Western Empire into the the Irish Golden Age, wore early Catholic vestments. But that's pretty much it. We can't say any more. And if anyone wants to message me and give me any examples, please do. So down below, I have my source, sources, which, like I said in the beginning of the video, will either be at the bottom, at the description below, or within the video itself. So thanks very much guys. I hope this is some some way informative and I can't wait to be invited on the channel again. Toodaloo.